Hello and welcome to all of you out there. Um, welcome to the webinar organized by Contact. Just uh, before we start, just be clear that if there is a technical hitch, and I think we're always worried, aren't we, when there are webinars, please do bear with us and we'll do our very best. If you lose sound or anything, bear with us. And those of you joining by PC, laptop, tablet or smartphone, you should now be able to see this introduction slide. Okay, so today's webinar is about the local area SEND inspections and the revisits. Really, I'm sure that many of you will have a lot of information about that already, but we wanted to pr provide this opportunity for an update. So today, on the end of the line, we've got Lee Pickerel, who's with me, Gareth Ashcroft. Lee Pickerel works in the uh, Care and Quality Commission and has done a lot of inspections. Gareth Ashcroft, DFE, is policy lead for local authority accountability. And I'm Andre Imick, DFE, STN and Disability Professional Advisor. And again, there are a lot of attendees today, so good to have you all on board. And this is a really good opportunity for us to have a dialogue about a really important development in the SEN field. During the whole process, you will all remain muted throughout. But if you do want to ask a question of any of us, please do use the question icon on your GoToWebinar toolbar on your screen. This will enable you to type your question into the text box and submit it to the webinar administrator. The webinar administrator will be in touch with us and we will select as many questions as we can answer in the time that we have. If similar questions are received, and I'm guessing that there'll probably be quite a few similar questions from you, we will condense these where possible. So that's the technical side over with, and uh, do feel free to ask questions. I think we all feel that the dialogue is the important part of today's webinar. And the purpose of today's webinar is really to provide information to parent care forums out there on the role of the parent care forum in an inspection and a revisit process. So what's your role in both of those? It's also really important that we all share an understanding of what happens in those local areas where following an inspection, a written statement of action is required. What actually happens following that Friday afternoon when the local area hears that the week's inspection has led to the identification of areas of significant weakness that require a written statement of action. And then, It'd be interesting just to describe why the rationale behind the reintroduction or behind the introduction of the revisits and to how we respond to findings from those revisits. We're in the very early days of learning about those. And of course, uh, the final purpose is an opportunity to have a dialogue for you to ask questions and us to do our very best to answer those questions. Thanks very much, Andre. Um, it's Gareth here. Morning, everybody. I uh, hope you find the next hour very useful. I'm sure we all will uh, in this room here. Uh, I'm just going to give a bit of an overview on why we put in place the inspections from the, the DfE. And I think, obviously, the key thing here is to, to highlight that these were new inspections and brand new inspection framework when they were introduced in May 2016. They'd never been done before for SEND. And the inspections are one tool by which we nationally and you locally, working with your local authority and health partners can support improvements in services at a local level. We obviously use it at a national level to tally with things that Andre and the advisors and NHS England know about the local area, as well as looking at data to see how an area is doing and what else we may need to uh, support and challenge them on. Uh, really important that obviously it's carried out by Ofsted and CQC, which uh, reflects the um, responsibilities set out in the Children and Families Act and the Code of Praxis. And of course, really, really important to know that the inspections are there to provide reassurance to families and uh, wider partners that services will be held to account, but also to ensure that those services are supported to improve. So I think a key thing there is, is that the inspections will highlight where there are strengths for services, as well as perhaps where improvement is needed, and of course, where inspectors may identify weaknesses. And I think just the last thing by way of an introduction from me is just to really emphasize how 
Um, the DfE and NHS England work closely together to follow up on the inspection findings. Really important for us that we replicate the activity by the inspectorates, that we replicate what we want to see at a local area with partners working well together. And basically, we work closely together to follow up on inspection findings, as well as wider information that we have on how services are doing locally. And then it's really important to note that one part of the thinking behind this, and I actually believe that it's happening in, in reality, is that the inspection process has been a driver, is intended to be a driver for improvement across all three agencies education, health and social care services. The inspections are focusing on those and highlighting where things are going well and where they're not going so well. Clearly the Children and Families Act does require cooperation between those three agencies and there are quite a number of duties up, upon all three agencies. And I think it's fair to say that um, not all three agencies came, uh, came equally to the party in 2014 and that the inspection process has been a really important driver for making that happen, helping it along and so on. It's certainly been the case um, in those areas that have required written statements of action that that's actually made it happen and required it to happen. The other thing that we think has been really helpful and sometimes not enough of is made of this is that the inspections do shine a spotlight on good practice, including in those areas that receive written statements of action. And I think there isn't an area in the country that doesn't have some aspects of good practice. Some have got many more aspects than others, but we don't generally in SEN shine spotlights on good practice. We don't shout enough about what's going well. And I think the inspection letters really do enable us to target um, and identify that. And again, we always need to remember that when an inspection letter is published, any comment it makes about any aspect of the local area's services or performance is identifying something that's out of the ordinary, not what's normally expected. It's either going extremely well and therefore worthy of mention or really badly or not so well and therefore worthy of mention. So on both ends, it's highlighting good and not so good practice. And certainly that's beneficial for everyone in terms of learning which areas are doing it well and where can we learn from that. I think that um, we know that all areas will be inspected by 2021 um, and that the revisits will actually continue um, until 2023 and of course that is going to depend on um, how many local areas receive a written statement of action in that final year. Okay. If we talk about the role of the Parent Care Forum in an inspection and actually in the revisits, I think that all the inspection teams view that um, parents and carers and young people are integral to the work of inspectors. We couldn't do this um, inspection process without you. Uh, and we've worked hard to change processes to get better at informing parent carer forum of the inspection so that um, the local area will notify the parent carer forum five working days before the SENS inspections. It's slightly different for the revisits where we actually notify the local areas um, and the PCF two weeks before the on-site work. And that's in recognition that actually we shouldn't be uh, asking local areas or the PCS to produce new work. We're just looking for evidence um, of how the local area are working to implement the written statement of action and the evaluation of the progress that they're making. So actually, if the PCS are wanting to submit evidence within that two weeks prior to us getting on site, that's really, really important. We um, do consider that the PCS parents and carers are key stakeholders and their, their evidence is really, really key to assessing on progress being made. And I think that in the past, 
some PCF have actually felt that the PCF themselves were being inspected. And I'd just like to offer that reassurance that actually the inspectors aren't. Um, we recognise the value of the PCF. And if sometimes um, there's those questions, those searching questions, it's because we're trying to understand how the PCF are being supported in their work. I think that um, parental contributions, we've changed how we do that through the webinars. We've opened the webinars up now for a longer period of time during the notification period and actually whilst we're on site. We um, do consider every single email that is submitted through the Ofsted website. We look at every single one. Um, we talk to PCFs on when we're on site, not only at a formal PCF meeting, but we have a wider opportunity to meet with parents and carers and young people as well. And that's both through the um, revisits, but also on the send inspections themselves. I think what's quite exciting is that um, the send revisits are actually a really bespoke piece of work mm. to each local area. And what we do is we look at, so when we're looking at the send revisits, we actually look at the letter, we look at the written statement of action, we consider how that work that we've asked the local area to do will impact on parents and we actually create a um, bespoke parental survey for those revisits that we run by the PCF to make sure that we've got the language right. In terms of what happens on a sent inspection where a written statement of, of action um, is deemed to be appropriate, we ask the local area um, to coordinate the responses of the local authority and the CCG um, to produce and submit to both of the regulators, Ofsted and CQC, an action plan within 70 working days. And that action plan is given really close scrutiny by both of the regulators. And we won't accept it um, unless we think it's going to deliver the improvements necessary for that local area. Um, we usually manage that within the 10 working days and we always write um, to the local area setting out what our view is. Sometimes we say no, it's not fit for purpose and we ask them to resubmit it and um, we'll have another look. So far, um, we've managed to get agreement um, by the second, second tranche of, of submission. Um, and then, of course, there's a new piece of work where the DfE asked us to go back in um, to those areas where the um, written statement of actions had been issued. And we did think about um, 18 months of the um, written statement of action being declared fit for purpose. Um, so in some places that is within 18 months. Um, it's, I suppose it's 70 days. So what yeah. we say is a local area has got 70 working days when we leave site to um, and the, the inspection letter is published. They have 70 working days to actually get a plan to us. Um, if that plan um, is approved, they then got a further 18 months before the revisit is scheduled. Mm -hmm. And and it's it's within approximately 18 months. Um, you know, there might be, in most um, cases, yeah, yeah, in most cases, yeah. Yeah. Okay. When a report has been published that requires a written statement of action, we always hold, um, as quickly as we can from the day of the publication, a meeting with senior officials from the Department for Education and the, and the local NHS. And we meet with the senior leaders in local areas. That's a, a real opportunity for the leaders to be called to account to explain what happened during that inspection and why the findings are as they are. It also enables us to get a feel from the local area about how they are responding to the um, inspection letter and to get an assessment of their commitment to improvement. It certainly gives us an opportunity to make sure that they are taking it seriously and that it, the messages are feeding right up to the senior leaders in the council, including the uh, council members and the chief executive. 
So we have that meeting, we're looking for reassurance. We also then follow that up with a letter from Minister Zahawi to the senior leaders commenting on their inspection letter, usually expressing disappointment that a written statement has been required. And that goes to the local area and the CCG. From then on, after that senior officials meeting um, and following the publication of the written statement of action, we work together. So my team, the DFE SEN advisors, the NHS England advisors, we work together with the local area to support and challenge their progress against the actions in the written statement of action. We'll be doing that for 18 months at least. We provide encouragement and actually I think encouragement is something we can't underestimate certainly in the early days following an inspection where um, the local area has been found wanting. Often morale is quite low, people feel uh, quite deflated and they do require encouragement to pick up the pieces and to move forward. We also provide a lot of advice and guidance during the uh, preparation of the written statement of action and subsequently in terms of challenge about the, their sort of aspirations for, their, um, for where they're going. Once the written statement of action is agreed, we have at least quarterly meetings from the department and the NHS England advisors with the local areas, usually the senior leaders, and we do expect uh, parent care forums to be part of that process at the local area level. Um, those visits are, are to check out how things are going in terms of the written statement of action, to keep a, an eye open for the impact of what they're doing and to make sure there is full engagement from all parties. The local area will have access to a support offer so the department has quite a wide range of support for example the council for disabled children can provide specialist help on improving joint commissioning arrangements locally uh, they often have some um, very useful workshops on writing outcomes improving your education health and care plans an area we know is coming up as a particular issue Whole School Send is a school improvement organization by and large which focuses on SEN and disability and they work with school leaders on how to audit their school and improve working practice for children with SEN and disability and they've certainly proved very helpful in relation to areas where there have been issues around exclusions for example and also progress and attainment of children with SEN and disability. Contact itself, who thankfully are hosting today's webinar, thank you. Contact also provides support to local areas where there have been issues, say, around co-production. Um, and that, of course, is a very key element. So all in all, there's quite a, quite a, a wide uh, and open package for local areas, depending on the individual circumstances around their written statement of action. And I think just going on from that, in terms of the introduction of the revisits, obviously Andre has set out there many of the ways in which uh, how we follow up with the local area following that initial inspection. And the introduction of the revisits, which um, we announced in November and began in December uh, of last year, are a way for us collectively, both the local area, nationally and yourselves as parent care forums and effective areas, with, depending on what your individual positions are, is to understand the progress that that local area is making. I think it's a really important milestone for areas to focus on to see what they can achieve by that point in time and to really, really focus on getting their, their improvements um, uh, heading towards 18 months and of course beyond because in many areas there are large scale improvements that's needed which will obviously go beyond the 18 months as Andre alluded to before with the, uh, the advisors working with them. I think as well that it's uh, really important to highlight that the uh, the purpose of the revisit is to really determine the uh, the progress that that local area has made against the areas of significant weakness in the written statements of action. So for those um, parent care forums who may have experienced it so far, it really is focused very much 
on those uh, those areas that were addressed in the initial uh, inspection. And Lee may want to say uh, a little bit more, but um, if you have seen the uh, handbook uh, that was published on the revisits and the link is at the bottom of the page there, that sets out that if inspectors do find mm -hmm. things of real weakness or worry yeah. to them on top of what they are particularly looking at, they can obviously report that in the uh, letter, I think it will be, and also yeah. to the, uh, the departments respectively. But the main focus is particularly on the weaknesses that were detailed in the book. Yeah, we, it's, it is not a re-inspection. Yeah. Um, I think that mm. we're all clear about, you know, this is mm. not a re-inspection. It is a revisit, and that is the focus on that. We talked earlier about how we actually um, create a bespoke parental mm. survey to uh, as one of the key contributing mm. factors to make us that for us to make that assessment um i think that um we we are spending between two and four days on site mm. and it is um an inspector from ofsted so it's a hmi from ofsted and it's a children's service inspector from the care quality commission and um it is a priority we will always interview the pcf and give a meeting um as part of that that's that's one of the mandatory meetings that we have and then we may Make, um, arrangements to speak to um, children and young people as, as well. Is there anything else you wanted to ask about the revisits? Um, I think you were aiming to ensure that these same inspectors do the visit yes. wherever possible, and I can understand yes. what people. But is, yes. that, is that right, Lee? Yes, we are. Um, certainly. Um, we, we, we've got an idea where, where when we schedule. I think that we are trying wherever mm. possible um, to use the same inspectors. Mm. It's not always possible because of churning staff. Of course, of course. Um, right. But where that happens, is. the intention is. Good. And that's really useful as well because mm. they know the local area. Yeah. And actually, to be fair, when you've been on the inspection, you want to go back. Because we, we, we yeah. do like improvement um and it, and it's a really good feeling when mm. when you've gone there and you've seen the improvement that's been made uh it's why we do the job actually yeah, professional curiosity yes yeah that. no it's why we do the job you know you like to see you like to see good things don't you yeah. okay okay so the revisit letter Lee. So yeah, that revisit letter. Um, what we're going to comment and, and we've published one so far um, is we make the, we make um, a decision about whether that local area has made sufficient progress to improve each of the serious weaknesses identified in the initial inspection, and that's always an interesting one because sometimes local areas to put in the plan things that weren't actually involved that we didn't articulate in the written statement of action they've used it as um, a wider mm. vehicle to drive change mm. um, so the, the revisit letter will only talk about um, the progress made against those um, areas outlined in the written statement of action and we'll actually try and be really clear um, about the effectiveness of those actions um, made by leaders against each serious weakness um, and we will try and put a brief summary in there because these letters are supposed to be helpful yeah. to leaders and also um, to the PCF so that they can hold leaders to account actually around the progress um, and then we will of course make reference to an evidence for any other serious concerns that Gareth talks about um, earlier in the presentation that we identified during the revisit and we communicate those to the DfE and NHS England as well and we use that not only for the timing of any future inspection under the LA SEND framework but also for the um, within CCG we use that as our uh, evidence base for ongoing monitoring as part of the regulatory work that we do. I think that where sufficient progress is being made, um, I, I think that um, Andre, I think that you um, go back to your routine monitoring, yes. role, don't you? Yes, what we do, uh, when, uh, <clears throat> when sufficient progress is being made, and indeed where local areas come out of an initial uh, inspection without requiring a written statement of action, the department continue, has always had an engagement with all local areas um, in terms of monitoring their performance data and there's a link SEND advisor for every single local authority. We continue to work with local authorities when they've come out of their written statement of action and we will continue to make visits according to their needs. We will continue to be 
in touch with NHS England. We'll continue to look at the publication of data and pick up any other indices of, uh, of worries or otherwise. So we do keep on top, and many local areas actually invite us in to talk through yeah. strategy development or concerns they've got about some things. So, um, so I do think we keep an eye on most or all local areas anyway, once they come out of their written statement of action. And I think just going on from that, Andre, obviously where, where insufficient progress is being made and, and uh, just to widen that out to where a written statement of action is required, um, what we do, uh, along with NHS England, is we, we always consider what the most proper action is to help get the maximum impact to support that area to improve. And I think that's a really important point to, to emphasise that it's really key that we understand the individual position each area is in to know how we can best support it to bring about the improvements that's needed. And of course, Andre mentioned about some of the different tools that we have through the advisors, delivery support and so on, and with NHS England. And of course, um, we, we have the, the opportunity to use uh, more formal powers if we feel it is necessary to do so. Uh, and I think just to reiterate that bit, that for me, the real, um, one of the real values and importance of the revisit is to help us understand and to get the most out of that report to help us and the local area understand where things have progressed perhaps more than others and actually what those areas are that they need to focus on mm -hmm. to really speed up that rate of uh, improvement so i think it's a really important uh, that we collectively yourselves as parent care forums and us nationally take the most learning out of those reports mm -hmm. to understand how we can best bring about the improvement that's required okay so now, as you can see, there is an opportunity for questions to be put forward. If there are any that we don't have time to cover in this session, they will be posted and answered through the contact website, along with the recording of this webinar, details of which will be circulated next week. And there'll also be a short questionnaire, um, which I think uh, contact would really value your uh, contribution in completing as this will enable uh, them to assist with further online training events. So now we've got a question and answer session, which the, um, which the um, administrator is sending through to us, and we will do our very best to answer them. And I think the first one really is, to, is from Margot out there, um, asking about the in invitation to forums, and really confirming whether or not forums will be invited to be involved. Lee? Forums are always invited. Um, it's mandatory. Good. I think that's um, reassuring. Both for the original send inspections and for the revisits. Uh, it's, it's part of the mandatory timetabling. We couldn't actually do these inspections or revisits without ask, ask, um, asking people yeah. to contribute. Okay, and certainly the feedback we get when we go in to meet senior leaders is that the Parent Care Forum has been really very important in the in the inspection process and local areas know that okay we've got a, a question a couple of questions from Tamsin Green one is about the um, concerns about the current education budget situation how can we ensure that children will still get the educational provision that they need well I think I'll pick that one up I'm happy to do so um, clearly, at the moment, there are a lot of concerns about SEN budgets. I mean, firstly, we have to say that at the moment, um, the SEN uh, high needs budget has not been cut. Um, it's certainly under pressure. And in fact, uh, in December, um, we announced a package of additional monies going into the high needs budget, including £250 million this side of March. Well, we are aware of the pressures out there on increasingly stretched resources, and certainly the department is keeping a very close eye on that, and we'll be considering that for a spending review application, which is a government, a, a government process for ensuring that all departments have um, the right levels of resources. The second part of that question is about the educational provision for children, and actually the law the SEN law is about, it's a needs-led process. So local authorities are required to meet children's special educational needs where they are identified. And there are processes for monitoring that. 
The inspection process, whilst it's not a budgetary driven process, inevitably does take account of the quality of provision locally and whether it's bringing about good outcomes and the level of satisfaction amongst users about those services. Can I, and of course, can I add to that, Andrea? Yes. I think it's more, more as well, because we know that in local areas there are sometimes difficult um, decisions to be made. Mm. And one of the things that we look at is actually around co-production and how effectively local areas have involved the parents, um, carers and the PCF in making those decisions. So we look at co-production across all of it. So co-production of that commissioning level, that decision making, but also because in question three that right. um, Tamsin's highlighted, she's talked about the importance of parental yes, contribution right. as well. Yeah. So actually co-production across all three tiers is really important yeah. to the inspection team and forms part of our judgment. And I think just to, to build on that, I mean, Tamsin's there about how we can make sure that that happens. And I think we we're all very, very clear from what I think what we've all said there is that we are clear that EHC funds should be and need to be co-produced with families, including obviously the young person themselves. So I think one of the things that we've seen from the inspections, and not just areas that are inspected, are ways in which um, uh, areas can make sure that that happens particularly well. And also, uh, I thought it might be helpful to flag at this point that the the DfE uh, has, uh, with one of our partners, published a EHC user journey mapping resources, which actually sets out from some research that we did with local areas um, about what people find most useful uh, in terms of developing an EHC plan, what they like and, and they don't like so much. So I think any area that perhaps is struggling a little to, yeah. to, to get that co-production right obviously needs to work with its partners in its forum, but perhaps that resource I've just mentioned could be helpful to the local area. And I'm sure that's part of this uh, webinar when it goes out, yeah. we can make sure that people see the link to that resource. Absolutely. That would be helpful. Right, thank you. Um, we've got a question from Tracy Smith, uh, a very good question, rightly so, about would preparing for adulthood be offered in the support offer? Indeed it would, and I'm, uh, I should have included that in the list of the offer. Um, so thank you for the prompt. But yes, our we the de department commissions work from the uh, NDTI, the National Development Team for Inclusion, and um, where that we we commission that for lots of different areas, but certainly um, for those areas that require a written statement of action and post 16 or or preparing for adulthood or the outcomes achieved in terms of NEETS data, for example. We would explore with the local area whether they needed input from NDTI. So yes, um, that should be included, um, and it certainly is. And I think I think building on that, one of the key themes that's coming through inspection is actually around transition yeah. Yeah. and how um, a lot of work is needed in that particular area. So I think that the preparing for adults is is, is yeah. key to that. And I think um, what we very much encourage, like we said in the presentation, is for, um, for partners to really learn from each other as to how they are helping and supporting outcomes to yeah. improve. And I think that's a really important element because we've seen yeah. in all of the reports published, including, of course, those with the written statement of action, what that area is doing to support the improvement in outcomes. Yeah. And very often there's quite a, a wide range of diversification in there. Some things relate to supported internships, some things maybe to do mm. with um, um, the preparing for indicators, etc. So really encourage areas to work together on that. Yeah. Okay. And I do think lots of areas need um, encouragement around that the, the send agenda is zero to 25. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and it's really important that they address their commissioning mm. to make yeah. sure that those pathways are being um, commissioned yeah. out to 25. And it's certainly, uh, this is the area, the post-16 agenda, it's probably the most challenging of all the new areas we've introduced because it's new territory for all local areas. And when I was talking in the presentation about good practice, one of the things that has been helpful is that some areas have had good practice identified in school uh, colleges named who are providing um, very good programs. There's quite a lot of reference to good supported internships, for example. So there are areas we can yes. learn from and other areas I know are very pleased about that. OK, so another question. Yeah, Gareth. Andrew, we've had a question here about how soon will the, uh, the first round of inspections be? And I think just to reiterate that bit that they, um, they started in May 2016, they'll run for five years. So if you're area hasn't been inspected yet then of course they will be any time between now and um, around about mid 2021 yeah, I think yeah. it will be so uh, we have to Watch wait, wait for that call I suppose <laughs> um, 
it, it's obviously the inspectorates who, who do the scheduling of those. Um, but you can be pretty certain, obviously, if you haven't had your inspection yet, that it will be in the next two years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, we've got a question from Maureen Morris. Um, should the parent care of forums be invited to the meeting that DfE and CCG have with senior leaders following the written statement of action? It's a good question, Maureen, and I can understand where you're coming from on that. At the moment, parent care forums are not invited to that meeting. This is a meeting with the senior accountable officers, and often we have some quite uh, challenging and tough discussions with them about their prioritization of the SEN agenda, um, the level of resourcing that they're providing, the level of commitment, the level of interest. Um, but what we do have, usually that session, or always that session, is two parts. The first half is the senior officials meeting, but we then go straight into a second half of a meeting, which is about preparing for the written statement of action, preparing how to produce that so that it's, it's, um, it's on track and it's acceptable to Ofsted and CQC. And for that meeting, we always require or expect uh, the parent care of forum. Okay. And I think it's important to, to emphasize that 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 senior officials meeting, as you probably said, the two halves, you know, the second half is, is incredibly important because yeah. that is um, the, the one of the meetings where we really set the tempo for yeah. and work together to do the support and challenge elements to get them into action yeah. prepared. And of course, Andre, you've been to quite a few of those. I know that there are very senior colleagues from the local authority in the CCG who usually go to those as a matter there of fact. There are, yes. Yeah. And I think Tracy's asking about the um, how is the SEN support cohort monitored in the visit. Um, we always use, um, when we're, we, we select some cases, and as part of that, we always select cases where SEN support is a feature so that we don't just look at EHCP, we pick up the SEN support, young children, young people as well. Okay, thank you. So they're part of the criteria yeah. for the case yeah. selection. Yes. And I think that's increasingly coming through in the inspection letters. There's more and more yeah. reference to um, to the SEN support. And there's a, and certainly in the outcomes section, there's quite a lot of uh, comments about the progress and attainment of the SEN support cohort. And of course, we welcome that because we think there needs to be an increased emphasis on that group. Margot asks about the challenges that parent care forums are experiencing in relation to fully participating um, and asks a question about the general funding levels of parent care forums. Well, I'm sure you're all aware that it was about two or three years ago that the that uh, parent care forums were had a, an increase in their funding. We know it's probably not enough, um, but we are certainly very, um, very impressed with the time, the commitment um, that volunteers are putting into the process. Obviously, it's an area of funding that we keep constantly under review, and our policy leads are frequently in discussion with the national network um, representatives. So it is something that's kept under review. So can I assure you about it being kept under review? And can we thank you for your ongoing yeah. commitment, time, and energy? Yeah, certainly, it yeah. has been very impressive. So thank you. Right, just give us a moment while we turn to the next round of questions and absorb them. So, um, right, we're just reading a couple of questions that have come in, so give us a moment while we, um, and I think there's um, one that's come in. Um, just building on that question about the costs, Maureen is saying that um, the cost of the local area inspections um, and the time for revisits can be very expensive for a forum. Can the DfE and NHS England suggest to local areas and CCGs? We certainly can suggest that, and I'll take that away, Maureen, and yeah, yeah. Uh, mention it to my, teams, my team, and I'll mention it to um, NHS England people to try and... Uh, and try and do that. I mean, I, I think that's a, that is a good question. We'll it is a good question. Away, yeah. Yeah. I think um, I get the impression that perhaps um, some local areas perhaps do more specific work with their forums and others, but I think that's a, 
it's a question for something to take away. Yeah. Perhaps Andre, what I could pick on is, is Beverly's question that we've been asked here about um, will um, senior leaders uh, in areas asked to do a written statement of action, will they be uh, required to attend any training uh, themselves as, as a way of showing the commitment from the, the top down kind of aspects? And I think we want to just really um, uh, reiterate and really, really emphasize that what I'm sure that we are looking for, as well as your, yourselves as parents in the respective areas, is that clear, strong leadership from a local area to uh, senior leaders in a local area to bring about the improvement that that's needed. And of course, it will be um, <coughs> that will look different in different areas. But I think what we would very, very much want to expect, and as we've seen in many of the areas that have um, have worked strongly to to improve their services, is very, very visible leadership, which has a strong focus on engaging with parents. So um, will they be specifically attended training themselves? There's no formal course that we would say to a leader that you need to go on particularly, but I think the key thing there is that we would expect a local area to do what they need to do and work together to improve services as needed, working with their partners. And that could include coaching, mentoring, could formal training. Um, there's, there's no set yeah. menu, is there? Yeah. Yeah, it, it's right. a very individual it approach. Depends on the area. Um, can I um, pick up on what Ruth has asked around the issue um, or potential for small groups of parents um, with personal issues with a local area, flooding the webinar, as well as um, perhaps recruiting uh, other parents from um, outside of the area to join in and feeling that perhaps this doesn't always reflect the picture of the area and asking how inspectors um, balance um, this evidence to all to ensure that all parents get their voices heard. Um, the webinar is actually only one mechanism that we obtain parental views. Uh, we use emails and we go out to schools where we meet parents from schools. We hold a PCF event um, where people can come in to talk to us. And um, we also have a, almost like a public consultation um, where you know, parents from the local area can come into a meeting. Um, and inspectors actually uh, are very experienced in balancing that viewpoint with what's happening in the local area. Uh, so mm. sometimes it's not purely um, the quantity of response, it's the quality of the response and actually it's about measuring that view um, with the local area's view because we always ask the local area to, um, if they've got one, to produce a self-assessment framework mm. and it's always very comforting if what parents yeah. are telling us matches with what um, the local area tells us. Yeah. So it, it's, it's, we, we constantly bear it in mind, it's not all about the quantity, it's about the quality, it's about looking at themes that um, arise and actually do the local area know about those and it's the skill of the inspectors um, mm. to actually bring all that together um, in a judgment and a recommendation. Yeah, and certainly the, in their work with the local authorities, my team of advisors is encouraging local authorities to make sure they keep on collecting feedback from parents. For example, when they've uh, finished the EHC needs assessment, to keep the local area under review and to encourage parental contributions and feedback about that. And it is really important that local areas have a balance of sources of intelligence about parental views, um, because we are reassured that the inspection process does not just use the webinar as the sole yeah. evidence about parental views on the local area. I think, I think um, it's interesting as well because um, we've, we've got a question here around um, from Ald Ald Aldona. How much help should there be for children who are home educated if they have an EHCP or not? And is this something that is checked on the inspection? Well, I'll answer the question about whether it's um, looked at an inspection. Yeah. I can absolutely categorically say we always ask about home educated children mm -hmm. and what support there is, right from um, early mm -hmm. help around the offer from the school nursing service, mm -hmm. right through to um, what educational support there is. So it's absolutely, they are one of our vulnerable groups that we always, um, we always ask about what mm -hmm. arrangements there are. Yeah. OK, and again, the code of practice spells out the position for those with an education, health and care plan who, who are being home educated. Yeah. 
Okay, and again, there have been some comments that we've followed up from the inspections on some local areas. So it's certainly the case that this is being checked out and reported on when there are either very good things or not so good things in relation to home education in a local area. Um, Andre, we've been asked here about, um, from, from Margot, about how, uh, sorry, who is um, entitled to get PFA support and guidance? Do you have to have a, an AHC plan, for example? And I think just to be um, clear that the preparation for adulthood support and guidance obviously are tools that are there to support um, local areas to um, uh, improve how they uh, ensure that children and young people get uh, good outcomes, etc particularly around the four domains that cover preparation for adulthood. So I think the key thing there is, is that that guidance and that support is available to all local areas uh, and you, you know, it's not just for uh, focusing on children and young people who may have an EAC. Yeah. Andy Williams, you're asking about the importance of the agencies and the services working together. Um, you're concerned that it's mostly left up to schools trying to do everything on their own. Um, and you mentioned CANS as a particular concern. Again, there have been a small number of the local area inspections that have highlighted CANS as a strength in a local area, but there aren't that many. We know that it's a national issue. Again, you're probably aware of the mental health work going on through a green paper, and a number of areas have started receiving additional funding for being a trailblazer mental health service. This invariably focuses on the school and brings the school into ensuring that, they're, that they've got a team around them of specialist mental health workers, educational psychologists, and so on. So there is, um, the government is very committed to the, um, to the mental health agenda, which is of concern, and looking for improvement, because we recognize what you're saying, that far too often schools feel that they are struggling with mental health issues and not getting the support they need. I think I think this is really interesting because what we're finding in inspection is that actually CAMS are involved. So very often there are long waits to get into CAMS, but when yeah. young children and young people get into the service, they're usually quite positive about the service. What remains an area for improvement is sharing that information um, with schools and through the EHCPs because mm. I think that there is still work to do for CAMS to be fully engaged in that EHCP process. Mm. Um, it's interesting when we go out and we use case tracking and we go through it, we go into the CAMS um, and actually the work is happening. Yeah. It's the communication around yeah. that that's often not as strong. Yeah. And I think, yeah. I think there's a prime, you know, I think Andy is, is quite right there about the, the importance of partners yeah. working together. And Absolutely. of course, there are some examples um, uh, from many, many areas. Yeah. I've got a good example yeah. of where schools are working well as part of the overall partnership. Yeah. And I think the I can I can immediately remember thinking that there's quite uh, a few areas that have strong comments about school nursing, for yeah. example, uh, health visitors, etc. Yeah. So all all relating, as you say, to that um, early identification, school and actually supporting that um, emotional health and well-being, as opposed to that formal specialist camp support. Yeah. Because if in the local area you've got um, organisations working together to support that early identification of um, emerging emotional health and well-being concerns and they can be addressed um, then we don't need we children and people don't need that specialist can okay. so that's something that we do look at as part of the inspection we look at um, the commissioning and the future plans of emotional health and well-being services and support um, within that local area uh, Lee, this is probably for you. Um, a general question about how is the participation of children and young people inspected? Concerned that there might be too little feedback on it in the inspection letters. I think that's a fair comment, actually. Um, yeah. I think that the majority of meetings that take place are during the day, and sometimes children and young people are at school. There is the webinar. Um, young people, children, young people we know do contribute to the webinar and we know that um, some, um, for example, some people, um, some children, young people are actually supported. So, for example, uh, in Leicester City, um, there's something called the Big Mouth Forum, um, which, which promotes inclusion in Leicester City. And they listen to the views of young people who have SEND. Um, and actually, that's helping to inform and develop services in the city. Um, I can think of um, Southampton, where many parents positively report about they exp their experiences of the support they've been offered. Um, 
So I think that it's something that we look at, um, it's something that we test out. We have lots of opportunities for children and young people. I can think of a recent inspection um, we when we went into a school for the deaf where those young people were facilitated to input into the inspection. Um, when we go into the schools as part of the SEND inspections, the children and young the, the inspectors all speak to the children and young people in those schools. So I think that given we're on site for a week, mm -hmm. I think that they that we do make every effort that we can. I think as well it might be worth maybe just saying a little bit about <clears throat> when you do the revisits, obviously when you go and speak to children and young people yes. to hear their views on that. I don't know if you want to say a little yeah, bit. Yeah, absolutely. That. So we've already talked earlier about the very specific focus, a very bespoke approach um, to the revisits. And in fact, all of the revisits so far, not only have we spoken to parents and carers, but we've also um, made time in the t very tight timetable to go to speak to children and young people yeah. who've actually been um, directly impacted um, by the actions of the local area in terms of um, getting that improvement there. Okay, um, there's a question uh, from, sorry, I'm just coming back to you. Um, again, another question from Margot. I have noticed improvement in school support for SEMH is for social and emotional health issues. Is this good practice being shared? Um, I have to say that uh, we share it wherever we can. There's been some, yeah. uh, some very yeah. good stuff highlighted by the inspections. Remember I said earlier that they only refer to things that are out of the ordinary. They're either particularly good or particularly weak. So um, we are aware, for example, of very good work going on in Wigan, where there's multi-agency help bringing CAMs together and providing support uh, early for children and young people. Similarly, in, in uh, Plymouth, there's been some very good um, work going on there. And elsewhere, um, in Lincolnshire, children and young people who are referred to their CAM services are judged to be receiving timely support. There's very short waiting lists. And for children and young people who have a learning disability and a mental health need, the quality of support is good. So we are recognizing that, recording that, and spreading the word where, where it's needed. So where those examples exist, we can certainly, from my advisor team, pass it on to those areas that have been found to be wanting in terms of and this think, and it's been part of written statements of action and i think moving forward the inspection teams are recognizing that cams can't exist in isolation alone yeah. so what we're increasingly doing is inspecting a local area's response to mm. improving the emotional health and well-being of mm. their children so there's much more a focus now on what we would classically call tier two yeah. which is that yeah. um, early identification early help um, so that those children may never need to escalate, their need may never escalate into CAMS. Mm. We're also looking um, so how that works on the ground. We're also mm. looking at um, how smooth the pathways are between that early identification um, of emotional mental health support and actually how if they do need that mm. um, more specialist support, how smooth the transfer is to stop children and young people being bounced around the system. Mm. So that's you will see that increasingly being being commented on in um, in the the inspection letters as we move forward. Yeah. I think um, just to highlight that bit about how we are spreading the effective practice. Obviously, Andre mentioned quite rightly advisors working with individual areas, um, but we also work very closely with our um, partners, particularly say obviously Contact, who uh, as Andre mentioned very kindly hosting today, but also um, CDC as part of the, the wider uh, partners uh, that we work with. And I think the key thing there is is that. We have things like the regional coordinator set up with local authorities, and I think the forums on um, uh, on here today will probably know who your regional LA coordinator is, and they support sharing that effective practice. There's also things like the DMO DCO network, which is a really really important uh, way to share uh, effective practice and learning. And I think also what we would really really encourage very very much is for areas to work together. So particularly within their own regions or even further than that, of course, to spread that effective practice. And we know that many local areas do go round to various events and share their learning. And that's something that we would really, really want to encourage. Yeah. I think that sector led improvement is absolutely critical. That can't be underestimated. So I think just to finish on that bit, it would be. 
there's always more we can do, I think, to share that that effective yeah. practice and it, but open to know what people think the opportunities for are, are yeah. on that, because I do think that's something that we want to really, really push yeah. quite strongly. Okay, um, another question we've got, uh, uh, again from Margot, um, very interesting <laughs> and a uh, very practical suggestion that we uh, could hold children's input more during school holidays mm -hmm. because attendance at school can be challenging for many children with uh, SEN and disability. So, um, <laughs> Lee, what about the inspection process? Moving um, it to the school holidays. Um, I don't think um, there is the capacity to be able to do that. We've been mm -hmm. given five years um, and we have to inspect every local areas within that five years. So, the um, the timetabling is tight mm. we only have a finite um number of resource mm. uh, and you know we do try when we're out there we do try the, through the parent care for we do try through the schools um yes i would love to be able to do it i think one thing to, to add to that is obviously that's the schedule of the inspections yeah, isn't it yeah. but i think it's fair to say that i'm sure yourself as inspectors when you go in that you want to see evidence of how the local area themselves yes. has yeah, got that yeah. input from school children on an ongoing basis and how they use that to improve yeah. their services, mm -hmm. know how well they're doing. So I think just to just to emphasise that it might mm -hmm. not necessarily be that inspections can be yeah. timetabled then, but you would be obviously looking to make sure the local area is taken on board um, children's views. Yeah, because the, the focus of these inspections is actually how effectively a local area has implemented the yeah. code of practice, um, and it is incumbent upon those local areas to consult um, with children and young mm -hmm. people. Yeah. Um, and that's so that is one of the things that we look at. Okay. Margot's followed up our question on the CAMS very nicely by sending us an example of um, a school that she has had good experience of in relation to the provision of support for CAMS issues. And I think you were pleased about um, Lee's message about Tier 2 uh, work. So that's great news. Um, have we got any more questions? At the moment, we're uh, we haven't got any more. We've got a few more minutes for a couple more questions to come in. Clock is ticking but down. Certainly, <laughs> certainly it's been, from our point of view, it's certainly been a wide-ranging uh, yeah. list of questions and one or two uh, quite interesting challenges as well. Um, so we're just waiting for maybe one more question. Um, and we've had notification from the administrator with, uh, with three minutes to go. There have been no further questions. So I think we'll hold on for another three minutes. Um, is there anything else you want to say in conclusion, Lee? I think that I would just like to say thank you to the um, parents yeah. and carers mm -hmm. um, of the children and young people for taking the time to speak to us today and to join this webinar, yeah. um, especially if for some of them it's going to be hard term and we know course, that yeah. that is a particularly, any school holiday can be a challenging time. Um, so thank you very much. Yeah, yeah I think I've you know, very much, um, echo that and I think really uh, want to encourage that element of please do you know continue to to work and support and challenge your services locally because that element of ongoing improvement not just an inspection yeah, yeah, as a yeah. point in time or a revisit the ongoing program of improvement of understanding where things are strong or where need to improve doing action assessing that action and improving and getting that real focus in place is, is really key and obviously parents have got a great role to help in supporting you. Well, that's why we're here, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I would just like to say as well, in conclusion, that um, the introduction of the inspection process, I think, has been a really powerful tool. We're all in the early days of it and um, we're all learning from it. So, um, you know, I think we're we're very encouraged by the early days of um, of the process. Right. We've got one more question and a very, very good question to finish off with and I think I'll ask Lee to finish it. So Beverly, you've asked um, how do we contact or how do the inspectors contact parents who are not Parent Carer Forum members? Do we trust schools not to cherry pick parents? And do you get in touch with parents of young people who are off roll? So Lee, who, okay. how do we get that wider group of parents? So we ask the um, local authority to write out to um, the parents of mm. all children um, to tell them about the inspection. Um, and in lots of areas, actually, it's not always um, the PCF 
um, that's invited to, to meetings, well, that's wrong, it is always the PCF, yeah. but very often there are special interest groups that come along to those meetings as well. So it's not always the PCF. We, um, as we said, we've got webinars um, that's publicised by PCFs and other interest groups um, through Twitter. I've seen lots of activity too, so it might be um, a specialist um, group of parents around ASD, for example, yeah. or children, young people um, who have Down syndrome. So we, we, we do get um, a wide range of representation. You have open forums. We have open forums, absolutely. Um, in terms of do we allow schools to cherry pick? Well, actually, schools, um, so the local um, area have got response, local authority have got responsibility for writing out to schools and saying that this inspection is happening. Um, and we do increasingly check that those letters have gone out to schools yeah. because in the past we've had um, feedback that the schools haven't been sending the letters out to parents. True. Um, so we do increasingly check that. Um, I think that if you were to be um, on an inspection, you would see that uh, a wide group of parents uh, come to tell us about their experiences. Uh, and certainly not all of those would have been cherry picked by the school. Mm -hmm. So I think that we've got cuter about it. I think we've got better about it. We're aware um, of some of uh, the strategies that might have been um, done either deliberately or not deliberately, mm -hmm. just because, um, so for example, um, sending a letter out and putting it in his child's bag um, yeah. is not necessarily the most helpful way um, to, to involve a parent in, in, a, in, a, in a meeting that's going to happen at very short time. So I think we, we try our best. Yeah. And also try you, you best. triangulate what you hear. Oh, absolutely. Evidence, all the time. All yeah. the time we triangulate. Um, we're always testing it out. Yeah always okay. in terms of off-road children it's interesting because one of the things that we do look at as part of the evidence as well is we look at send yes, um and whether that's an issue um, and we look at complaints as well um, to see if there's been parental complaints yeah. around off-rolling and I think that there's, there's figures as well so those yeah okay. we try our best right thank you and I'm going to have one more question because it's very practical and I think uh, it'd be interesting for Lee again and do the inspect it's from Ruth. Do the inspection team want evidence from forums sent electronically or as a hard copy? Which is easier for you? The people want to help you. Lee. <laughs> they do. <laughs> what's, do you know what's something? Most do you know something? Whatever is easier for that particular PCF. Sure. I would not want to be prescriptive. Right. We know that PCFs um, are very <laughs> often run on um, skeleton staff with volunteers, um, and actually we want to make it as easy for mm -hmm. them to contact yeah. us as possible. Okay, so anything goes. Yeah, anything goes. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay, well, what a way to finish. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you to everyone who's participated in this. We hope you found it helpful. And please do provide contact with feedback. Um, and can I thank Lee, Gareth, um, for joining us today. So cheerio, everyone. We'll Thanks, be everyone. signing off. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye.